Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to use propensity score matching in Python. For those who don't know, and very briefly, propensity score matching is to study uh, variables in order to have some causal inference. And this is when we have unbalanced uh, groups. So when you have your treatment and your control group and they are not comparable, use propensity score matching in order to skew them and make them uh, comparable. So that's the general idea. Very exciting technique. And let's get started. We need to do a couple of things. So we need to get some libraries and as well, we need to do a bit of data manipulation in order to then at the very end, apply the propensity score matching and to get our causal estimates. So as a comment, import libraries, we are already going to import a couple of them that we are going to use throughout this tutorial. So import pandas spd. And pandas is for the data manipulation. And now we are going to import stats uh, models as uh, SM or rather yet stats models dot API as SM. And that is exactly what we are going to do. And what is the purpose? It's only for the sake of getting the data set. Let's do F9 to run. And then let's immediately get the data set. So get the data set as a comment and then data set equals. And then we start. So we get our SM that we have just imported. Then we use the function or rather yet the model data sets. And then finally, we do get underscore our data set function. And then inside there are a couple of things that we need to do. We need to have the data name and we need to have the package. So we are extracting a data set from R. R overall is far more abundant when it comes to data sets. And this is a function that enables this extraction. So wages is the data set. And then what we're going to do, so package equals and then PLM is the name uh, of the package. So let's get and do it. Uh, so F9 and we'll see that it is here and it has several things. So it's a dictionary and what we need is actually this data part. So this data frame that is here. So we need to do one extra thing. So data set equals and then we go to our data set that we have just created and we do dot data because that is exactly this key over here. And let's do F9 to see. The problem that we have here today is actually very interesting. It's about the income inequality. So what we are going to do is that we are going to compare um, males and females of similar characteristics and similar demographics, and then for the same or a similar type of job. And what we are going to see is whether their wage is similar or not. So this is the overall problem. And since male and female have historically different opportunities, they also have different backgrounds. And as such, they are not so comparable uh, overall because it can be that, you know, males overall have had more opportunities to study or that they have started working early or that they have just a bigger uh, work experience. And as a result, this makes the groups non-comparable. And this is why we use propensity score matching so that we are going to create a group of males that is then comparable to the female one. And as a result from there, we're going to estimate what is the actual difference in the wages. So let's get started and let's just have a look at what we have here. So we have uh, experience and to have a notion of the variables that we are going to use, because that's actually the key part when it comes to any propensity score matching is to really to have the best set of covariates that enable then the best matching possible. And here I have the description. So X, so years of full-time work experience, uh, weeks worked, we also have a uh, blue collar works in the manufacturing industry, uh, resides in the south, uh, resides in the standard metropolitan statistical area. It's married. Uh, then the sex, which is what we are actually going to estimate, whether they are on a union contract, the years of education, whether the individual is black. And then the last one is logarithm of wage. Please do bear in mind that this is a somewhat old data set. And of course, 
maybe not everything that is here is now representative of the times that we currently live. Let's go back to spider. And here, let's continue. There are two things that we need to do in terms of data manipulation. And this is why pandas will be very useful. The first one is that everything that is here that is white, this is a string. And when it comes to using our library to do propensity core matching, it doesn't accept strings. So what we are going to do is that we are going to transform every single one of them into dummy variables because so, that's just the easiest way because also I have most of them are binary. So no, yes, no, yes, uh, male, female. And overall, it's just easier to transform them uh, into numerical variables. So let's get through it and let's start. So as a common transform uh, the categorical into dummy variables. And how to do this? So we're going to transform everything upon our data set. I still want it to be called data set. We're going to go to pandas. We're going to use the function get underscore dummies. And then what we need to include inside. So data is the first one. So data equals data set. And then the second one is drop underscore first equals. And this is so that we are just not falling into the dummy variable trap. So drop first equals true. And then this is it. So let me do F9 to run this. We can see that no more variables were created because most of them were almost in a binary form. They just needed to be transformed into these zeros and ones. Next step into the preparation, also the final one, we need to isolate the Y, the X, and then the confounders. So this is how we're going to split and this is how as well, we are going to introduce them to the package that is going to do the propensity score matching. Starting off with a Y, so Y equals, we're going to go to our data set, we're going to use the function lock, open square brackets. Now observations, we want all of them. So colon, and then comma to indicate now which is the variable that is our Y. Let's go to our data set to have a look. And it is named, where is it? So L wage, so the logarithm of wage is our uh, dependent variable and also our Y. So how do we do it? We introduce some quotation marks, then L wage, and this is it. Then we just need to do dot values, simply because the package requires that. Next, our X. So this is the variable that we want uh, to study. So X equals, and then similar thing. So data set dot lock, and then colon, comma, and then we introduce the name. So sex underscore wage, and then just dot values. Then finally, our confounders or covariates, they have many names and how to do this. The easiest way is to simply go to our data set and then do drop. And what we're going to do is that we're going to get rid of the two other variables, the L wage and the sex. And as a result, everything that is left will be basically the other 10 variables, which will be our covariates. So columns, and then what we're going to do is equals open square brackets, open the quotation marks, and then sex underscore male. And then the other one is L wage. And then finally, we do again dot values. One thing here, I did sex underscore wage, <laughs> but it is underscore male. Let me just confirm. So if we go to our data set, we are going to see the sex underscore male. So here we go. Let's select everything and then run. And let's with nine. Here we go. We have our X, our Y and our confounders. Now, so as a common propensity score matching, and we are going to use a specific library. So it's very likely that you don't have it. So what I ask you to do is that we're going to go to the prompt. So for me is the Anaconda prompt. So for me is the Windows key and then Anaconda prompt. And what I would just simply do here would be just pip install and then causal 
inference. Please have in mind the big I and the big C. So inference and basically you click on enter and then you know ideally everything should be done so just follow this very simple step i already have it so i'm not going to do it and i'm going to go back and i'm going to import it so how to do this so from causal inference we need to import our causal model this is very simple let me do F9 and to run it and then what we do. So we're going to call it model and then we do equal and then we're going to use the causal model that we have just imported and let me do control I to ask for help and basically it's just this. So this Y, the D and then the X. So what this actually means, so the Y is our Y, this uh, D is actually the treatment which we called our X, and then the last one is the confounders. So this is the basic logic. We start off with the dependent variable, then the variable that you want to estimate, and then the last one is the control. The next step, so let me just do F9 already, and what we do now is, so we do model, and then we do estimate via matching, so est underscore via underscore matching and then what we do here so we open our parenthesis let me do control i and one thing that i would like to highlight is that we have this bias adjustment which is set for false and what this actually is so specifies whether bias adjustment should be attempted you know arguably this does seem like something that it could be done and as such is actually going to be the only thing that we are going to include. So bias adjustment equals true. And let's do F9 again to run. And then the last thing that we need is just to do print and then of our uh, propensity model. So model dot estimates. We do have here some kind of warning, but you know, honestly, don't worry about it because it does not seem so relevant. And what we need to do is to really to run our model estimates. And let me increase this. So we have ATE. So the average um, effect of the treatment. And then we also have ATC, which does not make sense. So the average effect on the control group and you have the ATT, so it's the average effect on the treatment. And for us, the one that's relevant is this um, ATT. So we only care about the results of, you know, the overall uh, treated group. And this is, you know, exactly what we should be using. It's obviously should not be so different from the ATE. Usually they're uh, quite close. But for this specific problem, we should use the um, ATT. Um, so here, when it comes to estimating what is the average increase that a man has versus a female is of this 0 0.258. So it's roughly 26% uh, that a male makes more. So for a male who has more or less worked the same, the same years of experience, uh, the same education, and as well that works in a similar uh, demographic, and they are 26% more than the female. I'm pretty sure that you can see how much potential uh, propensity score matching has. It's a very, very exciting uh, technique. If you like this video, please do subscribe to the channel and as well uh, give it a like. I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in another video. And until then, have fun.